please give uh, them a warm welcome. Thank you. Hello, Army. Hey. Long time no see for some of you. <laughs> Uh, is everyone having a good day today? Yes. yes! For parts of the book that was confronting for me, um, I've been following BTS for almost six years now, and I'd like to think that most of the information in the book is information that I know from those you know, almost six years, bits and pieces of information that I get, but putting it in one book and seeing it in prose and in context was confronting, that I had to put it down a few times because I was crying. In terms of its structure, I like the way that it's done very chronological. So for someone who doesn't know a lot about BTS yet, it was, for me, I think, a good introduction to take you through, you know, experiences from pre-debut, their dorm days, each album. The way it was done was good description. Um, but for the most part, I think it's a good way of in introducing BTS to someone who has enough interest um, in them because you have to be able to relate to it. It's very, it's, it's, it's not fiction, it's fact. So you have, to, you have to know what those experiences are for you to be able to appreciate it. From a very boring scholarly perspective, yes. I like the fact that they kept some Korean elements, you know, cultural elements as they are. You know, for example, young. Right. So is there anyone who doesn't know what that means? Mm -hmm. You all know mangne, right? You know, yeah. Jungkook is mangne. So what does mangne mean? Yes. Yes. The youngest, right? The youngest person or the youngest member of a family. And then what does it young mean? Brother. 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 There you go, see? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but they kept the young uh, instead of saying, I mean, replacing it with older brother. It would, you know, it would have been awkward in English. Anyways, it doesn't make sense. But the, do you know why Jungkook you know, called the other members young? What kind of significance does it carry in Korean? Young is used among real family members, you know, between the uh, older brother and younger brother, but the Koreans, they use the term to indicate intimacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone who's not their family member, but someone who they consider as a family member, then they would call them young. Kagunmu. Kagunmu. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Kagunmu. You know what it means? Yes, which yeah. apparently is razor sharp yeah. um, dancing, razor sharp group dancing. Kagunmu out of their system yes, yes. <laughs> and they couldn't articulate it in the best way that they could i i feel where they're coming from yes they have so much to say but it's just different when it's in your head it's different when you say it out it's it's different yeah did you just say that in some youtube videos yes. that they practice well they practice the english bits mm -hmm. before the interviews and he fed them like, Aussie food, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got food. We, like, g'day, mate. Um, we also did... Um, I made them make the sound of a kookaburra. I was like, kook, 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 kook. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, kook, 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 kook. I'm like, okay, we're making noises. Um, so yeah, yeah, they also were visiting one of the videos, and, and um, you were feeding them Korean... Sorry, uh, Australian snacks, right? Yeah, yeah. And there was something, I can't remember what that was, but uh, Jody was eating something, and he said, Oh, this actually tastes like a koala. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, he was like, yeah, yeah, he was just like, Oh, this actually... You guys have been eating really interesting stuff. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's really... Uh, and it has been dominating the... I'm, I'm sure that conversation among the army, right? Yeah, because uh, um, Bob and I, we had a brief chat about that before, these, um, before the event, and we think that it was a smart decision, then, because in Korea, there was a lot of debate over that. You know, should we let them go to the military, or should we revise the constitution, yeah, so that, that these guys you know, can continue to perform? considering their global you know, impact and their economic impact, mm -hmm. right? And Bart gave a presentation on that to the Korean Business Council and the, the GDP, you know, their contribution to GDP and the Korean economy is just uh, ridiculous, right? So why should we let them go to the military, right? I think by making the decision to serve for their country, I think they earned a lot more respect you know, for the decisions that they made. Yep. And the fact that they shared a stage with Block B um, and they were fighting to be better than them. Um, I automatically, right after reading that chapter, watched it again on YouTube, and I was like, damn, Jimmy. <laughs> I was like, he really killed that. Like, he does this kick, and then he, like, then he rips his shirt off. And I was just like, whoa, man. A rival moment in yeah. K-pop history. Yeah.
like, oh, damn. Oh, he's a British charity. He couldn't have an ambition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He really killed that. But it was awesome to hear that, you know, the following year, a couple of years later, they had their own stage at the Mama. And I just, you know, what a way to say we're better, we won, you know, um, to take up, you know, over the final stage of that. That was really, really cool. And um, my other favourite bit was when they performed at the, the Grammys and how much intricacies was in that performance. Um, how um, there was so much like magic going on and how much prep and how much stress that they were going through. And that was really interesting. Um, and also to hear their schedules because like for example when they were um, doing a speech at um, UNICEF and stuff, uh, flying in and having to film at night and it just shows like their schedules are absolutely insane. Yeah, I guess that's one of the parts of the book that I, I found confronting because you can, um, how do I put this? We as, as fans want as much content as possible, right? We eat everything up. If we can see them every single second, seven days a week, every, <laughs> every hour, every, every second, if we could do that, we would, right? Then I don't know if anyone can relate to me and I hope I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, um, you know, no one misinterprets this or holds this against me. But I did feel a, pa a pang of guilt reading it because I realized I wanted so much from them and they were giving so much of themselves that they weren't taking a break. There was no break. There was no, they hardly had time to rest, to sleep, to take a breather, to step back. But then as an outsider and not knowing what they were going through, all I wanted was content. All I wanted to see them on TV, to hear a new song, to hear a new album, not realizing, oh my God. Like, um, and then I felt guilty. I realized I felt guilty. I, 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 I had to, actually, that was, that was one of those moments where I had to put the book down and ask myself, oh my goodness, the amount of, of, of content I wanted from them. And sometimes I would even complain, oh my God, I didn't see, you know, JK hasn't been on VLive for like so many days. Jesus, right? So, um, and then it makes you appreciate them more though, because the amount of love that they're just giving out to the community and the fandom. It's just, it's a whole, I told Dr. Shaw, I warned her early on, I'm so emotionally attached to the book, so. <laughs> if I just didn't read it, but I'm trying to see a part within the book that they actually said, you know what, we've done, we're good. We can just, you know, walk away and we've, you know, we've made a couple of fans. It was always, what can we do more? What can we give more? We've already given. Other people will just be like, okay, I've done my bit. I'm good. I'll be in history book somehow. But they were just every single performance, every single content, and every single act that they give out to the community is always, what can I do more? Can I do better? VP of Korea. So at that time, that was still manageable in terms of stats because that was, what, 2019, I think? So that was pre-Dynamite. That was before they, they became so huge. But um, in saying that, it's always been, there's always that. At that time, they were compared, the revenue that BTS was bringing to the Korean economy at that time was compared to 27 medium-sized companies. And that would be probably, what, five times more an hour, 10 times yeah. more. Uh, but I think as you have discussed, we are all, you know, we appreciate BTS at a very human level. Those of you who have shared your personal experiences and struggles, I really appreciate that. But uh, those issues, they, these guys also had the same issues, right? At different points of their career. That makes it more relatable, right? And also there is, is the universality, as you said. Uh, I think it's a very good analysis. Korean fans, they look for perfection, whereas life is not perfect. Right, and we've got our own baggages and issues. But when you see the celebrities being open about their own personal struggles, then that makes you like them, right? You have interest in them and want to know more about them. And I think that's how people got drawn to BTS in the first place. But um, from you know my perspective, I really appreciate them for their contribution. To the promotion of Korean culture. I think that's a perfect way to wrap up. So a big round of applause for Dr. Joe. Thank you for being part. Thank you yourself. Thank you. Trying to show them only the best of themselves. On the surface, these lyrics might appear to tell a universal story of the pain of love, but they also represent BTS members' minds at the time, standing before army.
love myself. They had wanted the world to acknowledge their existence, however possible. And once the glory they'd received alongside army had piled up as high as a mountain, BTS climbed on top and defined themselves as idols. From extreme praise to extreme criticism, they were judged accordingly to every kind of standard. And like that, flipped back and forth between glory and despair. Now, however, no matter what the world might say, BTS are BTS. They no longer need any other word to describe themselves. As idols, they had become icons. surprises or other outside proof but in the growth of a community built around each other and their fans. A progress filled with sadness and the future still to come. J-Hope speaks of his hope for the future of BTS. Even now our group shall we say we still put in a lot of effort. We don't give up and thinking of our fans who are supporting us we're like let's try it whatever it may be. And that's scary too because he can't help thinking it can all come crashing down someday. But we take great pride in each other. We've always tried our best, and we're continuing to try our best. I think that's worthy of some respect. There may be moments where we don't quite connect, but we've always overcome that through communication that I'm just too blessed to have met them in this life. I always want to express my thanks to the other members, and we keep running ahead with the thought of if ARMY can smile or rejoice, then that is our ultimate happiness.
Ashley Sherrill here. And a massive round of applause to KCC for putting this on. It is B99. <laughs> the winner on the book worth $60. Purple B46. Oh. Sikap. Sariling sikap, babe. Of the lighting. Yeah, this, the lighting is the power. This, the lighting is the power of the camera. Okay. <laughs> 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 